Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have another heavily requested Metallica for you guys. We're going to do Whiplash. Whiplash. It's not the name of the song. It's Whiplash off of Kill em All. Uh, this is in standard tuning. Got some great riffs, but it's pretty straightforward when it comes to Metallica. We don't have this a lot of crazy interludes and all that harmony guitar parts and stuff. Got a cool guitar solo from Tamit though, so uh, got a lot to work on here. Um, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell so you know I release a new video. And of course, check out my Guitar Academy. It's the GL365 Academy at GuitarLessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses on improvisation, technique, guitar tone. Um, all sorts of stuff. So please go check it out. Uh, we have a great community going over there, and I hope you'll join it if you haven't already. All right, so let's uh, let's get into this. We have this um, intro that is just based off an E power chord at first. And then we have this, which is actually not how they're doing it, but um, so let me talk about this. We have this hit of uh, just the E power chord first. So we have the low E open, seventh on the A, nine on the D, and uh, nine on the G. Just a down, up, down, up, and we're just gonna do that four times. And then we have an E minor seven chord that hits. Now, the best way to do this is with two guitar players to make it sound uh, closer to the album. So one can just play that same power chord let it ring, while the other grabs this shape on top of it. Therefore, you get that low G in there as well. So that's um, uh, fifth fret on the D, seventh on the G, and eighth on the uh, B. So you'll be going. So one guitarist will do that, and the other one will just the main power chord let that ring and together they'll sound like that if you have one guitar just do it like that little minor seven chord and then we have some more hits again one guitarist is playing the low e power chord and the other one can play it up an octave just doing that four times and then we get to the main riff All right, so that is kind of just straight alternate picking, heavily palm mute on the low E. And then we're gonna play some uh, double stops. We're gonna go seven on the A and the D together. Hetfield actually plays it with these two fingers. And then six on the, the A and the D. And he actually, I didn't think he uses just his middle finger here. And then, then across the f two fives on the A and the D. So we have this. And then you're gonna jump down and hit that E power chord. So you want the two of the uh, A of, uh, on the A and the D as well down here. So pretty simple. All right, so we're just gonna kind of uh, do that for a little bit, and then we get. Uh, there's no still no vocals yet at this point, but um, we go to what's. This is the verse riff. That takes us to the pre-chorus. So this is pretty simple. Just the low E still going. And then you're just gonna play the third fret power chord off the low E string. All right, from there we get to the pre-chorus, which looks like this. All right, so that, I like that one a lot. So, um, 
we had this power cord off the, it just does a two finger power cord here. It was the third fret of the A string. We had a couple of times. Down to the second fret power cord, the B power cord, the open A power cord for this. And then we had this. So this, oh, when you get to the low E string, really heavily palm muted, the first hit you're gonna hear is that open E power chord. Or just the open E string at least. And then you're gonna go on to the F sharp power chord here, the second fret of the low E string. And that's sort of a gallop. So we have this. And then we go back real quick before we transition to start the riff over. Heavily palm muted E power chords, so we have this. All right, so basically it goes straight back into the main riff, back into the pre-core, uh, back into the verse, back into the pre-chorus. So what we just did, we learned, we did that main riff, then we did that verse riff, and then we did the pre-chorus riff. Um, it basically does that all that three times in a row. Okay, so um, we're quite a ways into the song now if you get through the, just three verses in a row. Um, and then after that, um, um, last, the third pre-chorus there, we get to this bridge section, which looks like this. Here we go! All right, so that is, um, that goes into the solo there. So leading into this uh, little bridge section, that is more of those double stops, just like we did in the main riff of the song, but they're gonna start here at the seventh fret on the D across the, and the seventh fret on the G together. And just do that seven, six, five there, those double stops. And then move it to the normal place we did before, seven, six, five across the A and the D. And then we go into this. So what that is, is that's a quick pull off from seven to five on the A. And then to a heavily muted seventh fret on the low E string. And then we're gonna play the double stops at the fifth fret on the A and the D. Then back to that seventh fret on the low E. And then back to those two double stops. So that whole riff is. And then you just chug on the low E power chord. So we have this. So that obviously is played much faster. All right, so that. All right, so after he does that a little bit, we have Kirk Hammett's solo starts. Now, under the core, the rhythm guitar parts underneath the solo is the first half of the solo before that little break where he yells whiplash. He's just doing the same bridge rhythm. And then, um, uh, when there's that little break, when then Kirk Hammer goes in, um, he goes into the main riff. So that's what's going on underneath the solo. Uh, well, we have that, remember, it's um, when we're doing that, he lets that ring, and then back into the main riff underneath the, the second half of the solo. All right, so just to let you know what's going on rhythmically, there's nothing new there. Um, so let me play through Kirk Hammett's solo for you real quick, and, and then I'll, we'll take a look at it uh, phrase by phrase.
All right, so got some really kind of classic Kirk Hammett stuff licks going on in that one. So we're going to start out with this really fast lick that's kind of repeated though. So as soon as you get the lick down, it's not the hardest thing in the world. It's a little bit of a stretch, but uh, um, we're going to start out here though like this. So that's the actual lick. Um, we're going to start here pulling off pick 15, pull off 14 and 12 on the high E, over to 15 on the B, and then back to 12 on the high E. So that's the pattern that you're going to do, and you do it two times right here where we just did. You did it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to spread out a little bit. So when we spread out, we're going to play the same shape, but a little bit bigger of a stretch. We're going to play 17, pull off to 15, pull off to 12, then play 15 on the B, back to that 12 on the high E. So it's the same pattern, just a little bit different notes. So we're going to repeat that pattern probably about eight, 10 to 12 times. And then he ends that little section, that little phrase with a, which is a bend at the 17th fret on the high E string over to 15 on the B. And then we're going to kind of do the same thing an octave lower, which is at the 10th fret bend on the B string over to 7 on the G. So, so far we got this. All right, next phrase looks like this. All right, so this starts with kind of some uh, little fast blues licks. So that's sliding into the 14th fret there on the D, and then you're gonna go over to the double stops of the 12th fret on the G and the B. Hit that a couple times. And you're gonna pull off 14 to 12 there on the G. Over to 14 now on the D, and then over to 12 on the G and the B together. So it is. From there, we're gonna kinda stick with these double stops. And we kind of just do so at the 14 and the uh, fret on the B and the G together. Kind of pick them in, pick them in a couple times and do a little bend in there. Pull off to the 12s, over to 14 on the D, and then back to the 12s. So all together. And then we start kind of, there's a couple of parts in this that you know, there's just kind of erratic blues licks that are very common with many players, but it's gonna have to. So what he's doing, he's gonna start that with a bend at this 14th fret on the G and then roll from 12 on the B to the high E. And then he's just really taking the E minor pentatonic scale down. So those notes are just 15 and 12 on the high E, 15 and 12 on the B, and then 14 and 12 on the G. And he's really just doing a random sequence of licks. Like you can start up on this, kind of do like a little four note lick like that, kind of common blues lick. So just kind of hammering 12 to 15 on the high E, pull back off, and then over to 15 on the B. So kind of those, you know, common repeated blues licks and then take it down the same thing the same thing on the uh, the B string and then obviously it's going to be uh, 14 on the so he's doing kind of a style like that that's one of those things that you're not going to get really note for note but it's kind of and 
And then it's kind of kind of ending on that 12th fret on G. So you just basically want to make it down to there. So we've got really this. As soon as you get to that 12th fret, like you don't need to be ultra precise here. It's just it's one of those styles of licks that you don't have to get crazy about. And then. So that's uh, bending at the second fret on the G string. And he adds some pinch harmonics as he bends them. Just kind of really digging in. Release the bend, pull off to the open G over the second fret there on the D. So, so far we had this. All right, so now we have this little legato section, which is really cool, and you can actually get this one note for note. So it looks like this. So I'm gonna stop there. It kind of, it's kind of the same phrase, but I, I kind of want to stick with just the legato section. So this is all on the G string. So what we're gonna do here is you're gonna pick you're gonna pick a note, so we're gonna, in this case, it's gonna start at the second fret on the uh, G string. You'll pick it, and then you'll pull off to the open G, hammer back onto the note you just picked, and then pull back off. So it's a four note lick each time, and the first note of each four is picked. So now you just need to memorize if you can practice that lick a little. Now you just need to memorize where he places his fingers. <laughs> so it's going to be two, four, five, four on the G. So that's the first section. So what that is that exact same lick done of the two, and then four, and then five, and then back to four. So this. Uh, I think he uses his index finger. Uh, I like using a middle finger, it's more balanced to me, but... And then, we have an, a group of another four notes where we do that same pattern with, and those four notes are going to be five, seven, nine, seven. So five, seven, nine, and then back to seven. So it's the same pattern, you go up three notes and then back one. So... And then we go 9, 10, 12, 10. All right, so just that same pattern. Now, if you've gone 9, 10, 12, back to 10, it's going to end that legato section just by going 9, 7. So all together. All right, so that's the whole legato section. Probably the coolest part. Oh well, I like the ending too. Um, so it's a really cool part of the solo. And then what we do is we get into some more of those um, kind of blues-based pentatonic licks that aren't going to be completely recreatable note for note because they're just kind of random going for it kind of thing. It sounds like this. So first of all, we we start here and just B minor pentatonic. So here are the notes that he's doing first. He starts first starts out with two bends on the ninth fret on the G string, and then he starts doing those blues licks that we talked about earlier, kind of. Kind of dust off your, your pentatonic licks, and that's what he's doing. He's doing it like a seriously random collection. He never plays the same way twice. He's not going to play the same way twice. Just, he'll be in the same... 
<laughs> it'd be like something like that where he'll he'll be using the same notes. But the patterns are just kind of erratic, and that's just that's just that style of playing. That's just what he's going for. So we start with a couple of bends, and the notes that he's going to be doing these blues licks out of, he starts kind of on the B string between seven and ten, and he makes his way over to seven ten on the high E string, and then back down uh, the scale form. Now the scale form is going to be B minor pentatonic, so we're going to play this ten seven on the high E, ten seven on the B. 9-7 on the G, 9-7 on the D, and then you're gonna hear this, this little lick at the end of it that he does, which he plays 9-7 on the A, shift down to the uh, fifth fret there on the A, and then over to the seventh fret there on the low E. So we're gonna have like this, kind of start doing these licks. And you just wanna make, make your way down, so you end there on the right point. Okay, so now this next phrase is kind of an ascending uh, pentatonic type thing. It looks like this. Kind of ends the first half of the solo. Now, uh, like when I did it originally, I might have played a... You can play like that all up in 12th position, or you can kind of... Kind of slide into it kind of from where we were before. So I'll, I'll do it that way. So it's basically going. So we're kind of starting at the 12th fret on the low E and then playing 10 on the A, 12, 10, 12 on the A. So it, and then you're in that 12th position kind of E minor pentatonic form you're going to be hanging out in. And then 14 on the A. 12, 14, 12 on the D, back to that 14 on the A. So we have this. And then we're gonna, from there, we're gonna kind of do kind of a similar thing. We're gonna play 14 on the, you wanna kind of look at this as one lick here, and then another lick here. And uh, so this is just kind of an approximation. It's one of those things, too. It's kind of an erratic pentatonic lick. So we have, so 14 on the A, 12, 14 on the D, then 12, 14, 12 on the G, over to 14 on the D, back to that 12 on the G. So it is. So from here, I'm oh sorry. And then you're gonna kind of do it the same way we did a little bit earlier in the solo, where you start with a bend on the 14th fret there, roll over the 12s from the B to the high E. And you just do a lot of like kind of crazy blues, random pentatonic licks on those top three strings. And until you get to those bins. And that's what you want to time out is you, you're kind of like. So you want to time it after you get kind of the G string, then you're. You're gonna do a bend at the 15th fret on the B string, release it, and then, and then one more, and then that's that little pause where it's like, so, so you're kind of coming from, and then after the little break, we have the second half of the solo, which is over that manner. Of, okay, so it looks like this. All right, so fun stuff. We're gonna start with these uh, unison bends. So we're gonna be playing the 12th fret there on the high E string. 
And then the 15th fret there on the B, that's gonna be bent up. When you pick the two notes together, you're gonna be bending that 15th fret up a whole fret. So they become in unison, all right? So you're gonna... So you kind of bending in, does that bend? Kind of, uh, you know, kind of very fast bends, kind of. Kind of really digging in there. And then, what do you know? We get back to some E minor pentatonic licks across these top three strings. And it's kind of the same lick kind of process that we did earlier, just starting the high. And just let your fingers fly, man. Don't worry about the notes. This kind of thing is not a note for note thing. So that kind of sounds cool though. All right, and then he's gonna end the solo, another random lick, but a consistent technique. Let me explain. Sounds like this. All right, so all he's doing here is a three note repeated lick. So, um, and it's on the high E string. So what the lick is, we'll start it here, at the third foot on the high E string. Then you're gonna pull off to one, then pull off to the high E, the open string. So that is the lick that you're gonna first of all get used to repeating. Picking the top note each time and then pulling off all the way down to the open string. So what he does is he just starts dragging that thing up the E string. No rhyme or reason to what frets he's on. He's just kind of going chromatically up. And you'll notice that when he gets around the 12th fret, he doesn't really change the spacing of his fingers as the frets get smaller. So as he gets up to around the 12th fret, what was a two fret, spread, uh, uh, fret span down here is actually three frets. So as you get higher up the fretboard, you don't really have to alter and, and squeeze your fingers together to keep it at a two fret uh, span. Just keep it at a, uh, that, whatever it feels like when you started, just keep it the same way. Just slowly come up the fretboard. And the idea is to time it as you come up the fretboard, time it to where you get right there at the 22nd fret for those that bend at the very end, so. Now you'll see that some of the times, within one fret, he'll have two pull-offs. Like, he'll play the lick twice within one fret. And then move up. So you can kind of recreate that, too. Doing the lick in kind of one spot. I mean, do the lick twice in one spot and then slightly move it up a fret or stuff. So anyway, the whole thing is timing it to get to that very last bend and that's all there is to it. All right, so it's a cool thing that it's a repetitive lick, but it has that random quality to it. Um, and if you watch him play it live, it's always gonna, once again, sound slightly different even though, but the notes are going by a billion miles an hour. So it doesn't, it's, you're never really gonna pick up a wow. What, he didn't play the 10 to eight, six, and, and you know, three times like on the recording, you know. He, like I said, he's just taking a shape off the fretboard. All right, so after this, we go back um, out of there, you're back to the verse, a song which we've covered already, out of the, coming out of the solo, and then the pre-chorus as well. The... I'm sorry. We've already covered this, but then they end the song with a variation on this riff, uh, which I kind of just call it the groove riff. It's my favorite riff on this track. And of course, Hatfield waits till literally the last five seconds of the 10 seconds of the song to use it. So it sounds like this.
All right, so that is kind of like that tail end of the pre-chorus riff. Sort of, it's kind of doubled. So we have this. So it's that low E power chord. And then a quick little one, two, three on the second fret, the F sharp power chord. Then back to the low E power chord. And then back to the F sharp power chord once. And then back to the low E power chord. Play this. All right, one more time. Repeat. Repeat. So after like four times, you're just gonna let that low E ring out. So coming out of the pre-chorus, that sounds like this. Sustain a couple measures, and then we have this. So slightly different right there at the end. We had this low E power chord. The, once again, that little one, two, three on the F sharp power chord. Open E power chord, and then the F sharp power chord hit twice. So it's at the very end. All right, so pretty, pretty, pretty easy stuff though, but really, really rock. So. So, very cool ending, the whole ending again. All right, and that is it for Whiplash. I hope you guys enjoyed it, got a ton of requests, and I will keep the Metallica coming as always. See you guys again soon.